Some of you may have been lucky enough in the course of a school outing or a holiday to go across the Irish Sea on a car ferry. But have you ever wondered just what goes on behind the scenes, up at the captain and down below in the end room? Well, today we're going to try and show you. Come on. Hello, Archie. Just single up to the stern wire. Just the stern wire. Let go of everything else. Captain Pope, this is the bridge of the ship. Yes. An area which people very rarely get a chance to see. Could you maybe just tell us a little bit about what involved here and the well, various parts? Well, this is the, 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 the grain centre or the control. Controls are centred on the bridge, and all the, of course, the ship is navigated, and uh, it's really the most important part of the ship. So the starting ship, over the port side here, you have the. Well, we have the we have the controls. We have to actually controls on either side of the bridge, and also another one at the centre. Uh, when the ship is being docked, it's essential that the controls, you, the, the master, is on the side in which the ship is being docked. Hard to stop it again now, Leo. Did you give her three blasts there, Peter? Give her three blasts, will you? Yes. <laughs> Head up from the pool bag now, Leo. How long will the crossing be? Uh, it'll finish in the Hollyhead there, uh, all being well at 3.30. So that's nearly four hours, nearly four hour crossing. Although we could actually make it a little less, but uh, our schedule says four hours, so... So that's what you're aiming for? Yeah. So now, you're beginning to roll slightly. How, what sort of a crossing is this? How would you uh, well, for the time of the year, the end of January, it's a sort of a, an ordinary sort of crossing. Force. Uh, well, here time. we have we have I say about a force uh, five to six easterly wind out there now. Not too bad at all. Oh seven oh now, right, please. Ian, you're the second base. What exactly does that mean? Well, it means that I'm sort of in charge of making sure the charts and the equipment on the bridge are all up to standard. The safety equipment around the ship are all up to specification requirements as the department may require. Okay. And in terms of navigation, do you work <coughs> well, out courses in advance? Basically, on a ferry of this nature, the courses are standard. We have a, we've worked out the best route over the years to get to Dublin, Liverpool and back. And with two ferries running, we work it so that we don't come near each other for Obviously. navigational <laughs> purposes. <laughs> yeah. Now, on our way to Hollyhead, what, what will we pass? Um, well, we left the berth in Dublin here right. and backed out into the river and then proceeded out. And on the way out, we passed the main breakwaters and then into the Boyd Channel. Once we've cleared these, we set a course practically due east for Hollyhead. So would there ever be a variation on this? Um, Tide-wise, yes, and wind. If there was a very strong southerly wind, we'd... Uh, Hold to maintain a course east, we'd have to steer slightly to the south, yeah. so that with the tide pushing us up and the wind sort of pushing too, because these ships are very high windage, and although there's only about 15 feet of the ship underwater, there's 100 feet above. 
sea area forecast. Well, the forecast is not as bad as it could be. No, Chief, as soon as the captain decides that he's ready to go, in other words, that everything's ready to roll, what actually happens here? Well, basically what happens is the bridge, which is the wheelhouse, they ring standby on the some telegraphs here, and we answer the standby. Then the engineers start up all the machinery. And when they're satisfied everything is OK, they switch over onto a bridge control situation here and ring bridge control on the telegraph. Basically what that means then is from the bridge the captain can manoeuvre the ship slow or fast or whatever way he feels without communicating with the engine room at all. The only communication during standby would be is if something happened and of course we have the phones here and the alarm panels and all. We can monitor all pressures, temperatures, speeds of engines and the lot from here. Uh, possibly like that would be number three engine, number four, the same across here for one and two propeller speed, pitch, shaft revs, everything. So on watch, the engineer has everything in here. Plus as well, in the engine rooms, he can check locally as well. But basically the engine room is uh, divided into four uh, for safety reasons. You have watertight bulkheads just in case of collision or anything like that, it's all safety. There's a watertight door between each compartment. So starting at the after end, you have what's called the fuel handling room where all the fuel tanks are, the different grades of fuel we use. We use gas oil for manoeuvring. When we're full away on passage, then we change over onto a, a heavier grade of fuel. Then you come on into a gearbox room where you have reduction gearboxes and the clutches. So when you start an engine, you have to clutch it in to get the shaft turning. A little bit similar to a car, only it's all pneumatic. Hello? 49. Oh. 39, okay, thank you. Let's go away, John. Um, where were we? Yes, the gearbox room. Then you come along into the main engine room where we have four main engines. Each engine developing 4,500 horsepower, which is a total of 18,000 horsepower, so it's quite a lot, uh, which would give you about 21, 22 knots in reasonable weather. Uh, you have all your auxiliary equipment there as well, of course, pumps coolers and all that, you know. Then you move along into the alternator room, where we have four alternators, which generates their own electricity, in other words, their own power. Various voltages from 380 down to 220, whatever we want, you know. These are the main switchboards here. Each alternator will give you about 700 kilowatts. So if you multiply that by four, you can virtually light the whole town of Arklow up. 20 clear. Peter, did you get, uh, did you tell, did you get, uh, Hollyhead Harbour Radio and tell them? I should call them. Call them back. Hollyhead Radio, Hollyhead Radio, call them. Call them, Hollyhead Radio. See, we can't go in until she clears the harbour, is it? Mid-ship sail. She's going to be out staring. Yeah. Hollyhead Radio, Hollyhead Radio. Yeah, she'll be swinging. Yeah. Yeah. Have we? That's a big heavy lift crane there, you see, from um, Liverpool. Has its own motive power and everything. Graham. No better man. Mm. You're poor 20 now, Leo? I give a harder port now.
So here we are in Hollyhead, arrived safely, a lovely trip across, very enjoyable. And you know something? I'd really fancy staying here for a few days. But I bet you they're looking for me back at the studio. Oh well, some people have all the look. I bet they'll go back.